Hey guys, welcome back to Colson Scooters. I'm Colson Smith, and in today's video, we're gonna head to my boy Evan's house and check out some of his awesome nano tanks. He honestly has one of the nicest nanos I've seen. So without further ado, let's head to his house. All right guys, we made it to Evan's house. We're gonna check out some of his awesome tanks here. Let's go. First thing we're met with is this beautiful 10 gallon reef tank. All right, let's start with the equipment. Like what kind of equipment are you using? So for lighting, I'm running a Ecotech Radeon XR15. This is the Gen 5. Bro or blue? Uh, blue. Blue, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm running it, I think it's, um, I wanna say 10 o'clock to around 11 o'clock. Um, we're gonna mostly a little whiter in the morning and then um, the rest of the day is pretty much all blue, 100%. Um, overall max intensity is probably gonna be around 30% though. There is also the Ecotech MP10 tucked right in here in the back, giving me a bunch of flow pretty much all the way around the back, all the way to the front, and then it meets up with the return pump. That's gonna be blowing all over the front. Yeah, you got a lot of flow in here. Yeah. Oh yeah. Whipping around. Here. Yeah, it's uh, the return pump. I upgraded it, um, the stock with the CJ 1.0. The 1.0? Yeah. And then I got the VCM, or uh, is it VCM or VCA? VCA. VCA. Um, it's actually the drop down oh, that I didn't converts even it that. from, yeah, I think the the um, the stock is like 18 millimeter, I think, to go with, you know, whatever the, the Nuvos come with. And then that converts it from the 18 millimeter to half inch where I threw the half inch uh, duck bill on to get a little more of like a broad flow pattern. Um, Sweet. Yeah, and then the heater is just uh, the normal, just the Eheim. Um, with the ink bird on it. I will never ever set up a tank without an ink bird. Um, I'm two, guessing you've had troubles before where you... I just don't trust them. Uh, you just don't trust them. I, <laughs> I, just, no, I, I thought you were going to say I, I have this big incident. I don't, or... don't want to set myself up for failure for, for anything like that. Yeah. Um, redundancy gotcha. is key. Um, ATO, I'm just running the tunes 3155. Just got a little ATO reservoir right here. Probably lasts me a little more than a week or so, okay. depending on the season. Um, and the back compartment here, not much. Just have the upgraded um, filtered caddy. There's just a little bit of live rock in there, um, as well as just filter floss that I, you know, swap out whenever it gets dirty. You notice you were actually dosing on this thing too. Mm -hmm. It was kind of like your dosing schedule. Um, Daily, I'm dosing, I think I'm up to 1.7 milliliters of Alpha Reef by Tropic Marin. Um, and then I'm just getting into the aminos by Tropic Marin as well. I'm doing that um, every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, it's dosing uh, 0.7 milliliters of amino acids. Um, I was liking the Alpha Reef. Um, not too many people talking about the amino acids from Tropic Marin, so I thought I'd give it a shot. I like it a lot so far. You like it? Yeah. yeah Maybe I, like I need it. to get some of that. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely easier on a dosing pump too, because um, I always forget <laughs> to dose. So, yeah. and I think amino acids is something that I've always, you know, want to consistently dose I'm guessing all the time. you don't have to refrigerate it? No, you don't have to refrigerate okay, it. Cool. But yeah, I just think I was dosing too much. It was too infrequent. Some weeks I would dose it, some weeks I wouldn't. Um, I don't know, I just couldn't get the consistency out of it that yeah, I wanted. True. So um, I really, really wanted to put on a dosing pump. Um, yeah, like you said, the truck and you don't have to refrigerate it, so. It's a lot easier. Yeah, pretty much just drill the hole right in the bottle and then Call it a just, just stuck the dosing tube right in there. So super easy. What fish do you have in the tank? So I saw them swimming around. Right now, there is only one fish, and that is a Swazi basilisk. He's running around here somewhere. Super pretty. I don't see him too, too often. There he is. Oh, there he is, bouncing around. Yeah, I did have a green target mandarin, but he, he jumped, unfortunately. So um, I do want to get some other fish. I'm not, qu not quite sure what. Um, and I really feel like QTing anything right now. So 
but I'll definitely help you pick some. <laughs> I, I definitely do want to add some more fish in here. Let us know what you guys <laughs> think. Yeah. What should Evan put? What fish should he That's put right, in the what's tank? What's he missing? Yeah, what's he <laughs> missing, guys? Um, so, I mean, you got a lot going on in here coral-wise. What's kind of like your favorite corals? I mean, obviously, mm. is that Ghana your favorite? One of your favorites? One of the favorites, absolutely. It's yeah. my favorite. Yeah, I bought that piece in beautiful. Um, 2000, super early 2020. Um, was it like tiny? Yeah, it was super, super tiny. So I bought it in New Jersey. Oh, really? I moved to South Carolina. And then I brought it back to New Jersey for a little bit. And then right before I moved home, moved away from New Jersey, it was actually in my buddy's tank in Minneapolis. Oh my God. For a couple months. So this thing's been around the and world. And then last year, um, yeah, it just got shipped back to me. So and now we're yeah, in Florida. That, yeah, that's just, what is that? So Four or five states this in, place is, in a couple this of years. been a lot of places. Yeah, same with, uh, same with this hammer right here too. That's been all over. So what are your other kind of favorites? Um, Jawbreakers, super, super nice. That one's huge that one's right massive, there. massive, yeah. yeah. Um, this Favia right here is super, super cool. Yeah, honestly, I've never seen one like that before. Yeah, I forget the name of it. Um, so I have actually talked about you before in a video because I, you gave me a couple corals. Um, so this oh, is actually yeah. the guy that got, so you guys know, he gave me that uh, yellow, right, submarine yeah, yellow submarine Fabia. Yep. Uh, what's the Fabia next to it called? Uh, I think that's a worldwide all-star. I could be mistaken though. Well, he gave me a piece of that. Uh, and then you gave me a piece of the, um, what's those are they called? Uh, Rainbow Hornets. The Rainbow Hornets, yeah. yeah. I, I and those are doing really I well. I lost all of mine, so I got so we'll to get you some back. So we'll have to get you some <laughs> yeah. back. Yeah. You got to cut me some. Yeah. Um, See, that's how this works. You give me coral, I can give it back. I can yeah. give you coral, yeah, and you, you give it back. You never know what's going to happen. Um, yeah, but then once once you do lose, lose something, unfortunately, there always is a way to, a way to get it yeah. back from your buddies. See, like, um, look, at it, look at all his those. They're all super happy, yet he can still like lose one. Oh, it's yeah. just crazy to me. Yeah, I used to have a bunch yeah, of GMKs. All my other chaos in my 10 gallon died. Yeah, yeah. Just sometimes we, like, randomly. they just close up and yeah, I, I don't, sometimes I look at my tank every day. There are definitely weeks where, you know, pretty much the only thing I do is I just walk over, walk by with like a, a sprinkle of pellets every day. That's really it. Pretty much it. But sometimes I'm really in tune with it, which, you know, when it looks super, super nice, but sometimes I put it on the back burner and sometimes when you do that, the- uh, Busy at the store. <laughs> the, more, the more high end stuff tends to go so first. So this guy's also the guy that um, tests all the water kind of at Top Shelf Aquatics. Yeah. You do other stuff too, but yeah, all whenever I see you, you're testing water. All the zoo fragging. Yeah, everything. fragging yeah, stuff. It, so it, busy man, busy man. If it's a zoo, I probably cut it. Probably. Yeah. yeah if you order a zoo <laughs> online, it's, like it's probably a, cut by a him. Ninety-nine percent chance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next one, I'd probably say blue lagoons right here. Um, I've wanted these for a really, really long time. I've searched for months, um, couldn't find them, but I still really, really liked them, and then I was able to find them at Aquashella Daytona this year. So I was, I was pretty happy there. to see that. That's right, yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, I was super, super happy to see those again. Um, and then also for my last pick, I'm gonna have to go with the ACI Manila Spy right there. Um, Keep pointing at it again. That one right there. Yeah, super, super cool and unique yeah, That's actually really cool. Um, that's actually a Jake Adams piece too. So I'm pretty sure he named that um, and then Chris Meckley um, farmed it out. Nice. All right, moving right next door. What size tank is this? That oh, is a normal Aquion two and a half gallon. Two and a half. Um, yeah. I used to uh, have it set up for brine shrimp, um, and I never made any brine shrimp, <laughs> so so it just kind of sat there. So I, you know, I thought I'd make a nice little nano out of it. Um, so I removed the rim, painted it. Um, painted the back? Yeah, painted the back and the bottom as well. Oh, okay. Um, the mangroves look really good. Yeah. Did you get those from the outside? Yeah. From yeah, the and then I, um, I soaked them in fresh water for a little while until they started to root. And then once the leaves start coming up, I slowly started adding salt to bring them up to uh, just normal seawater. Um, and the substrate is actually, there's the, um, 
mangrove substrate from carib sea in there um, with a little bit of sand on top oh, so cool. yeah give them a little, little more nutrient we want to try it for a while i thought this was um Good you know probably one tank. of the perfect opportunities yeah. yeah um pretty much anything goes in here i have mushrooms yeah, talbot damsel in yeah i just back. added the talbot damsel uh where'd he go a little more than a week ago he usually hiding. hides behind the uh he'll get used to the tank um, then it'll start biting your hand when you put your hand in Yeah, there. right. <laughs> uh, a little bit of macro algae, uh, a handful of random mushrooms, a leather, a couple of zoas. Um, kind of like my overflow tank when when, when, when stuff, stuff grows. When stuff grows in here. In here, I just kind of I just kind of so throw it in. Um, so yeah, we'll see where it goes. I'm excited. Yeah, about me it. too. <laughs> it's look pretty cool. Yeah. All right, and then behind me here, when I was actually first walking in, I literally thought this was a freshwater tank. We got plants, we got a molly, but nope, this is actually a saltwater tank. Uh, it even has a blue striped pipe that I just now noticed. Oh yeah. I didn't yeah, even know yeah. I was in yeah. here. Um, He's really cool. There's also a, uh, a yellow watchman goby. What? Um, Somewhere buried in here? I've had them for, I want to say six or nine months and I've seen them four times. <laughs> <laughs> So, but he's a lot. Believe it or not, there is rock in here somewhere. Somewhere. Maybe. And he has a little cave. Um, this actually looks so cool, though. That he goes in. I yeah. thought this was fresh water. Not even. Yeah, did. I literally did. did. Yeah. You had to tell me it wasn't yeah. before I even realized. Um, yeah, I mean, so it's what all kind started. of plants are in here? So, this used to be. Uh, I used to have a bunch of dwarf seahorses in here. Oh, that would, um, be, that would be cool. Not anymore though, um, and yeah, I just started with like a, like maybe half a dozen leaves of the the Clerpa prolifera, which is like the blady one. Um, it did okay for a little while, and then I upgraded the light to the AI Freshwater Prime, and it was like instantly, like like it took just off. Like shot off. I mean, like, yeah, I couldn't even believe like, it. You're gonna have to start um, trimming this back. Yeah. Do you ever trim it? Uh, I trimmed it for the first time uh, two weeks ago when I was getting. Oh my god! I was Did getting, it grow back that fast? Uh, or is this trimmed back? That's trimmed. Oh my <laughs> god! <laughs> it looks so bad. And, um, yeah, it grows like crazy. Um, that's pretty much the only reason why I have the molly in there, just because I knew that's a fish that I could count on. Like if I eat. if I put if I put food in there, he's gonna eat it, and he doesn't. Well, he could have done clownfish. He doesn't but... care how much or how little. Yeah, maybe one day I would do clownfish in here, but honestly, I um, kind of think it's cool that you did a freshwater fish because now people yeah. will do it like me. They, they're just gonna think it's a freshwater. Like, I I have no what I'm doing when it comes to freshwater, so <laughs> yeah. people mention freshwater and I'm like instantly lost. But so you got a lot of different types of algae. Um, yeah, I think there's like got... eight or nine maybe. Um, like I said before, there's the blade kind, which is the Calerpa prolifera. There's more of the serrated that's crawling like crazy. That's, I want to say Mexicana, maybe. Um, I got Sound a couple like different that. kinds of Orgo. Um, there's the dragon's breath right here. And then to cap it off, um, the blue one there is that. some blue hypnia yeah. as well. That one's really pretty. I think that's it. Um, there is coral down here. Yeah, this it's a reef tank. It's a reef tank. <laughs> there's, there's coral, I swear. There is one singular. How is that even uh, alive under there? That's uh, a green fuzzy mushroom. That's uh, it, it's a green mushroom. It's not fuzzy. Anymore. Yeah, it's barely it's not. Fuzzy. It's barely hanging on, but it's um, still there. Yeah, and got a little snail chilling. There used to be zoas in here. I think it's super clean though. I will tell you that. Yeah. Yeah. Unless um, you say that this is algae infested. No. <laughs> so it for my though. my ice cap 20 gallon, I've told you about this. Mm -hmm. I do actually want to kind of get some macro algae and maybe like a mangrove. Yeah. Maybe I could come steal some of your Yeah, I could, I could give you as much as you yeah. need. <laughs> I kind of went into it. This one's um, awesome. Not knowing a single thing. And I, I still don't. <laughs> I just, <laughs> just kind of let it do its thing. Like, quote, like I said, like uh, just feed your fish like crazy. Um, if I start seeing the colors like a little bit off, I'll just add like a sprinkle of iron and a sprinkle of uh, Kato Crow from Brightwell. And that's about it. That's really it. Yeah. And you do actually have a Gorgon here too. 
Yeah, I'm guessing that's right photosynthetic. Here. Yeah, photosynthetic. Okay. There's actually another one. Oh, actually, Somewhere you know right what? Here. There's two polyps right there. Right, right. <laughs> Wait, right there, there's two polyps from the other gourd. I can't even, you can't even see that. It's in there. Those white dots right there. I it's a reef. It's a reef, I swear. Um, that looks absolutely awesome. So this is a super, super awesome power strip that I just bought. Um, Might need to get me one of these. It's a smart power strip, so it's controllable on your phone. But the whole reason why I like it though is because, you know, I'm working on my tank. The last thing I want to do is pick up my phone and try to scroll around on, you know, Apex or whatever. But you could just turn stuff stuff off manually like, like that. Yeah, you just hit the button. But then you and can then, also. Um, this came in handy when I was feeding the seahorses and stuff. I had to turn the return pump off to feed them the brine shrimp, but I always forgot to turn it on. But with this power strip, you can just click it back. You can on. see. I don't know it. if you can see this. There you go. It's. Uh, it tells you if it's off. Yeah, it's Wi-Fi, and you can even turn it back on. And can you do this like not Yeah, you do it anywhere. Yeah, anywhere? Yeah. Wait, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. And you could like set timers and stuff too. Um, oh, that's awesome. And then also like your energy, like if you're not home, you could see how much power it's currently trying. So that's awesome actually, yeah. Time. Yeah, I, I love this app too. How much was um, the power strip? I think roughly? on Amazon, it, it starts off at like 80 or something. I got it on like some random prime day and it was like 50 bucks. I might need so you. I want to switch it over. Get another one on that, yeah. Um, I need more, I need more uh, yeah. plugs. All right, so this is your little testing table. Yep, so I got a little bit of everything going on here. Um, this is also where I frag. I got uh, bone clippers, tweezers, toothbrushes, Sharpie, anything that I could possibly need, um, you know, working on the tank. And I still have a whole closet as well. Um, as far as testing, um, I'm testing pretty much everything once a week. Um, I've been using Salifert for cal uh, alkalinity, calcium, and magnesium. And then as far as um, phosphate and nitrate, I'm rocking uh, the Hannah checkers as well. Sweet. Um, I guess if you want to see some of the numbers, um, I try you to keep- write everything down? Yeah, and then as well as my adjustments. Um, so right here, I had a little bit of a busy week, so I didn't really test anything for about two weeks. Um, but you know, you can see like I'm, I'm bumping up the amino acids um, as well as like a manual dose of the Alpha Reef. Um, yeah, it would be a good example of that for the Alpha Reef. So uh, 1.6 milliliters a day to 1.8. Um, so I was sitting a little bit low on my calcium. I'd like to see it maybe in the mid fours um, I'm not too, too picky, um, you know, for calcium, for example, I'll probably shoot for like 425, maybe like 450, um, alkalinity anywhere from eight to eight and a half. Um, my mag's always been pretty low. Um, you can see my notes up top. I've been trying to, uh, to get my salinity up a little bit, trying to get a little more uh, magnesium out of the salt, but um, it still is a bit low, sitting around 1275, uh, 1260 a couple weeks ago, and then before that, 1230. Yeah, it's so low. it's coming up a little bit. I've just been manually dosing. Um, you know, same with nitrates and phosphates. If my phosphates are above um, 0 0.1, I'm happy. I'm not crazy if it gets too high just because it comes down so fast. Um, but once I do see my phosphates getting pretty low, I'll go ahead and feed pretty heavy. But yeah, anywhere from, you know, 0 0.1 to 0 0.15 for phosphates, and I'm happy. Um, nitrate, I used to shoot for around five. Um, that really wasn't working for me. The tank wasn't looking good. Colors weren't right. Um, so what I did was I stopped doing a water change every week, and then I went to a water change every other week, and that brought my nitrates from five and below upwards to 10 to 15, so. Perfect, yeah. I mean, you're doing something right. You look yeah. amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's always a work in progress, but yeah, I'm happy with it. Alrighty, guys. So that is all of Evan's awesome tanks here. Huge shout out to him for letting us come out and film them. We had a blast. Uh, make sure you check out his Instagram too. It's reefer.evan. I'll leave the link in the description as well. Go show him some love. Yeah. Till next time. Peace.